Hi, I'm Sherman Snyder, Mastercam AE out of the Houston, Texas area, and today we're going to be discussing clamps and fixtures for Mastercam. Right off the bat, we're going to be looking for a component, how to find these components and add these components to our Mastercam part file so we can get a better representation of what we're seeing for our fixtures. Uh, we will also be talking about simulation and collision checking and how to standardize these fixtures for future use to make it easier so you're not building an assembly every single time you bring these in. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I'm going to go over to one of my favorite websites for pulling fixtures. This is the Fifth Axis website. You may have seen this in some of my other videos. And let's look around and see how this web page navigates here. As we can see, I have a selections at the top. And I can also scroll through, kind of get an idea of what Fifth Axis actually has for fixturing here. Select our self-centering, and we can get some details here as well. You can see the vices, and as well as the block. But up towards the top here, there's actually a download section. And in this download section, there's a 3D compatibility tool that I really like. Uh, we can select the manufacturer for the machine here. And we'll select a Haas UMC 750, and I just, there we go, pass it up. And let's select our block. In the left window that we see here, you can see the 3D representation of this against our table, as well as other vices that we can add to this full assembly. And there's even some uh, some blocks down there at the bottom as well, some tombstones. I'm going to select the file format that I want to bring in. I typically like to use the Parasolids here. So we'll go down and select Parasolids, and we'll quickly download our file. Once the file is downloaded, we will have to unzip these files here and we'll be able to import in this file format that we just downloaded. So let's take a look at that as we move along here through the files. All right. Now, as we can see here, we're going to be merging this pattern in. And I'm going to pull up the folder with the unzipped files in here and I'm going to go ahead and bring in one of our files for our assembly. It's going to be for our fixture. You notice that you have the, the table and the mounting block at the bottom here. And what we're going to do is bring up the other file. We're going to use the hold control function to drag and drop. That way our next assembly piece gets merged into Mastercam. And what you'll see here is the merge pattern dialog in the left side of the window. From here, we can select our align operation here, and I'll select that bottom face and the upper face. And you notice that not all of the components in this assembly got brought in, so we're going to have to select some additional geometry. And I'll just drag a window over everything. Once we see that the component is moved, we can green check OK, and I'll green check to get out of this full dialog, or we can red X. So now, I'm going to go back to my main folder here and actually got my trapezoid block that I want to bring in and I'll use the merge function like once again we can hold that control there and now I need to align my part with my fixtures here I'm going to use the same method by selecting this bottom face and I need to select the mounting position what we want to align to off of our fixture so up top I'll select the floor of that vice jaw there. And we can see that the part is positioned at that height now. We can also use this dynamic gnomon to place it with our selection bar. I'll use the midpoint two points here. And I'll select one side and another. And this is going to give me a center point. Of course, we're going to have to drag our part back up using the Z axis. And we'll select the depth here on our part. Once it's aligned, we'll green check OK. And I'll green check OK once again just to get out of the dialog. And I also notice that my vice jaws are not touching my part. My part's just kind of free floating. I could use the dynamic transformation to move it. I could also use other alignments. But I like using the dynamic transform here. I could select the edge, and then we can quickly pull using that arrow once again. 
Now see, uh, I actually picked up on the edge, so I need to correct this here. Green check. We're going to go back in. You can see the uh, magenta color for the change there. Let's select this top edge. And then I'll drag it over to the end there. Next, we'll select the right jaw. And we'll select the mounting position on the face and drag that over to the edge of our part as well. And we can now see the full assembly of our part. I'm going to put this in, uh, well, let's go ahead and put it in a isometric view. And you can see in isometric and in top, we are not in the proper orientation. So this lets me know that we need to create a plane, uh, one that we can use for our G54. So out of our planes manager, we'll just select a new plane off of a face. And I can change the orientation of this plane in green check OK. Let's rename this to, uh, we'll say, G54 uh, Top Plane. That works for me. And I also like to go into here and change my work offset to be zero for my G54. Once we change the orientation now, you can see that we are in that top plane. And I'll go ahead and just select the fixture in the part itself and put it in isometric view. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at the verification of our part file here with our fixture. And as you can see, I have toolpaths loaded already and my part as well. I'm going to open up my verify. And as we can see here, we do not have any fixtures loaded. So we're going to have to go over to our simulator options found at the top of our toolpaths manager. And towards the bottom, we have our fixtures group here. You can notice that I do not have my part selected, just the assembly that we're working with for our fixture. Once this is selected, we can then go off into our verify. And then we can see our fixture here, that green color. This is going to allow me to select any kind of collision checking that I need on my part for my stop conditions. For this particular part, I actually have a collision with a rapid motion against my part, as we can see here. Inside of Verify, you have the option to be able to check off your part and off of the fixture itself. I want to show you all what we have for simulator options as well. Simulation and collision checking with Mastercam. Let's dive off into this and take a look at some of the settings here. Inside of this operation, I put a very crazy approach coming in, so I know my, my tool is going to travel through my table for the simulator. And before in the verify, I was talking about how we can already check off of our fixture and we can check off of the part, but what happens with the machine components inside of the simulator? Let's set up our simulator here. I can select the machine, in this case my Haas UMC 750. I also need to give it a workpiece geometry, as you see here selected. I'm using the auto position, and I'm also going to select my fixture components that I want to bring in for my simulator. And I can also select different stock. For this, I'm going to use the Mastercam defined stock that I already predefined. And we can launch our simulator from inside this window as well, or we can green check. Let's launch the simulate. So now, inside of the simulator, I can see that I have options at the top for visibility. I can see my fixture on my part. And I can also show my housing for the machine. And I can see the translucent view of the machine as well for the housing, or just completely turn it off. I'm going to go to my workpiece and our fixtures. And we're going to toggle around so we can see the translucent and turning the fixture off, and of course my workpiece. Now I got my stock highlighted as well, so you can kind of vaguely see the workpiece. Let's go ahead and uh, toggle that for translucent, and I can turn it off as well. Let's press play and see what kind of collision that we receive from that operation with that crazy approach. Now I have adjusted the lead in, lead out, so we're no longer colliding on that rapid motion as we've seen inside of the verify. But on the simulator options we could clearly see that we're approaching from behind our table. This is definitely crashing our machine. And then when it goes home 
for the next approach, we can see that it's colliding against our table once again. These are our stop conditions within Mastercam, and we can see the report. Let's say yes, and we can see the approach coming back. This time I'll say no, and let's make the correction to this. I'm going to go back to the contour toolpath that we have on this face, and I'm going to remove the X value for that approach. So we can see here we're no longer going through our table. I'll need to regenerate my transformation. And I'll simply select all the operations and now we can launch our simulate with the run option here in the machine simulation group. And I'll zoom out a little bit here, put in a nice orientation as well. As I press play, we can watch the machine move around the part here. See the retracts. Notice how that table kind of shifts as it retracts back to it's one thing I love about the simulation. There we go. And we are no longer receiving that collision report as our tool is no longer going through the back side of our table. So it's very easy to set up our fixtures within Mastercam, but I want to show you all a quicker method here. We're going to talk about standardizing these fixtures. Whenever I brought in the files from the unzip folder, they came in at an improper orientation here, and I actually wanted to correct these, uh, kind of make it a little bit easier. Let's start by showing how we can align, and I could use the dynamic, but let's go to our model prep options, and I want to use in my layout group my align to plane. Inside of align to plane, I'm going to select the upper face, and I'm going to give it an X orientation. Notice that I have the center set for my origin in the left window over here. And inside of this align to plane, I have my transform to plane set for my top. Let's select all components so they all shift. There we go. And we can see that I am aligned now to this top plane. Of course, we get the magenta color. Let's put in our top plane first. And we'll do a fit. I'll clear the colors to take it back to its original state. And from here, I like isometric, so I'm going to place it back here just so we can see our top view. And we'll save our component. And typically, I'll save these components out after they're already aligned. Let me show you what my files typically look like whenever I create these uh, Mastercam files after I've imported and aligned them. So right now, we see the base see the top plane set for the top side of that base and then when I look at my vice I typically like to set my origin for the bottom this makes it easy whenever I'm bringing in multiple components I'm going to use the control select and the control drop for my merge option for Mastercam we're going to bring in both components here full assemblies and we can now quickly see how aligning these properly inside of a file, how we can build these assemblies a lot quicker.